morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Bar Harbor, Maine. Today's verse is 1 John 2, 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. Now, putting this in context, John was warning us about the Antichrist, those who are trying to deceive us and bring us off the correct path. We don't have to worry so much about that. If we're Christians, we have the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit within our lives, and he will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. Then we need to abide in him, making sure that our love relationship is healthy and strong so that we can stay in the pocket, right where we need to be. Now, it says here, if you know that he is righteous, God is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. But we need to make sure that they're practicing his righteousness and not something else such as a self-righteousness. So how can we recognize that? Of course, the Holy Spirit will teach us things. If they're saying something that is against scripture, he will bring that to our attention and we'll say, hey, that's not right. But I also pointed out back in Matthew 7 that it says we will know false teachers by their fruits. So are their fruits serving themselves? Envy and lust and anger and such. Or is it the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Are these the fruits that we're seeing in them? Then it's very likely they're practicing God's righteousness. Not that they're perfect. None of us is perfect. But they're on God's correct path and teaching God's word correctly. Now, I wanted to bring us back to a verse I covered a very long time ago. It's Matthew 5, 6, and I have the link right up here. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And again, that's God's righteousness, not self-righteousness or something else. Some Christians or people who claim to be Christians are trying to come up with their own self-righteousness by maybe obeying the rules and fasting on a regular basis and uh, giving right down to the uh, nickel and dime and so on. We have to make sure it's not by what we do, but what he does through us. That's the true righteousness. It can also be subtle, such as, let's say, God prompts me to give. That's good. I obey and give. That's good. The place that I'm giving to, or the person I'm giving to, is blessed. That's good. So far, so good. That's God's righteousness. It's doing it His way. But then I might say, hey, look at me. I changed someone's life. I must be pretty good. All of a sudden, it's becoming self-righteousness. We have to be on guard for that. Look out especially for the prosperity movement because they will use faith as something you can use to earn points with God. It's my faith that can make God do this and that for me. I mentioned a book a long time ago, and I'll mention it again because it's so worth reading. It is called Dog and Cat Theology. And in a nutshell, it says, A dog says, You love me, you pet me, you feed me, you care for me, you must be God. But a cat says, You love me, you pet me, you feed me, you care for me, I must be God. So there's that subtle difference there. We have to be on the lookout. Now, let's get back to our main verse. It says that you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. When we can recognize that, yes, this person's got it together, they're teaching the word correctly, and there's the fruits of the Spirit in their lives, and the Holy Spirit uh, whispers to us, yes, this person is a child of God, they are born of him. That makes that person our brother and sister, which means we need to fellowship with them openly, not have any strife with them, not uh, uh, shun them or anything else. These are people we need to welcome into the brotherhood and love. So let's choose for that reason to love every moment because then we're going to love every moment. I'm your average wretch and I hope you have a great week.